I'll hunt you to the ends of the earth if I have to. Do you hear me? To the ends of the earth! <laughs>Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and welcome to a week of Warcraft. We are going to be playing Warcraft 3. We're going to be trying out all four major races, and I thought uh, for this episode we would actually break it up, and each of the four races we would give a fair shake uh, in its own episode. So I'm kind of showing my true colors here. I don't normally make uh, multi-part episodes, but uh, I was a huge fan of Warcraft back in the day. I did this back when I played Starcraft. I did three episodes, one for each race. So I thought, let's do it for Warcraft 3, because uh, it is uh, one of the games I played a hell of a lot back in the day. And of course, it's in the book, so we got to play it. So uh, my hands are kind of tied, guys. Uh, my name, Joker, that is the name that I went by way back in the day um, when I used to play online and stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin our journey into Warcraft 3, and I will talk about Warcraft 3 as we uh, kind of go on here. So we have the four different campaigns. There's actually a prologue campaign, too, which we're totally skipping. Uh, we have the humans, the undead, the orcs, and the night elf, and that is that is the order in which we're going to play these for our uh, video here. So let's go ahead and start with the human campaign, the Scourge of Lordaeron. Now, I have all the levels unlocked, and... Uh, suffice to say that we're not going to play all of these levels. I think what I will do is try a couple of them uh, for each different race. Uh, and maybe I'll try a custom game. I don't know. I haven't decided on that yet. But uh, let's go ahead and just try uh, Chapter 1, and then we'll skip ahead a couple levels and uh, continue to explore. So Warcraft 3 here was... Uh, it's a game in, in the book, A Thousand One Games, Just Play Before You Die. It is uh, the sequel to Warcraft 2... And it is by Blizzard Entertainment, of course. And this is the first Warcraft game that was fully in 3D. So when this game came out, guys, I can't stress how impressive these graphics were. Uh, you know, just like seeing these characters in 3D, seeing them talk to each other. This is actually a game where there is no mission briefings. So in StarCraft, you had mission briefings before you actually went into the mission. But in this game, it was all just done in-game, in the engine. And so the fact that the game was in 3D meant the camera could move around and characters could be seen from different angles and stuff. Um, I know it also had a very powerful world editor. So one of the cool things about StarCraft is you could go in and like edit the units, edit the maps and all that stuff. But uh, in Warcraft, it was even more powerful because some of the abilities were just about, you know, uh, making characters bigger or like changing their colors and stuff. And in StarCraft, if a character had an ability to make them bigger or something like that, you couldn't just transfer that to another character because the sprites wouldn't exist for it. But in Warcraft 3, you could. So you could create like custom heroes and custom abilities and all sorts of stuff and uh back in the day i spent a lot of time playing the actual game but then going in and like making my own levels and worlds and stuff so uh if you're paying attention to that opening cut scene i actually was not at all i just wanted to let it play in the background so you guys could see what a cut scene looks like in this game so we are here in the the human uh what would you call it the human camp and we have to travel to Strandbrad, and Arthas must survive. Now, here's the footmen. Uh, they are like the basic unit. And uh, Arthas here is a priest. And, or no, he's not a priest. He's a, what would you call it? A paladin. So he can actually, like, heal the dudes. Uh, so off we go. Now, the, the, the real addition to Warcraft 3, above and beyond, hey, there's a peasant just hanging out in his field. What's he up to? Can we kill him? We greetings. totally can! Oh, greetings, friend! You're dead. <laughs> oh, there's no consequences to that either. We just slaughtered a peasant. Uh, I guess the nobility can really do what they want. Here's a, a creep. Uh, sheep, you can always kill those. Those are usually wandering around in uh, Blizzard games. We'll just uh, explore around here. Now, the, the real addition in Warcraft 3 here was the addition of hero units. You know, other than that... It's very similar to StarCraft, and that's a real-time strategy game. Oh, we just recruited two new people. It's just two guys who are willing to fight. Uh, what's going on over here? This woman seems to have a quest, too. Um, so our hero unit here... Oh, wait, hold on. Timmy was kidnapped by Knowles. Oh, we definitely will. There's nothing I like better in this world than killing Knowles. 
But anyway, yes, it's a real-time strategy game in 3D, of course, as you can see. But the real addition was Hero Unit. So Arthas here, he can actually level up and gain new abilities as you uh, kill, you know, creeps or neutral enemies or even bad guys from the opposing team when eventually we fight another team. <laughs> There's Timmy, by the way. Um, so yeah, it, it was sort of, it was, an, it was a real-time strategy game, but it had this, like, RPG element to it. And I think that, that kind of made it really addicting to me back in the day. And, uh, okay, Timmy, we're going to save you. We're going to destroy this. There you go, you're free. We saved you. Oh, thanks Huzzah. so much. I have a reward for you. What did I receive? A ring of protection. Thanks. I also accept cash. She didn't have any cash to give me, though. Okay, here's a damaged footman. You can see he's only got... He's lost 200 of his hit points, but we can go ahead and heal him. Boink. Is there danger? And he is healed. For and off we go. So yeah, I remember when this game came out, like it was really fascinating that it's like, oh, this is a real-time strategy game that kind of blurs the line with an RPG. It, of course, wasn't a true RPG. Um, Warcraft uh, would eventually get a, a real R RPG in the form of uh, World of Warcraft. But... For the time being, it was actually... This woman looks really suspicious. Maria. Why is she so dark compared to the others? I don't know. Um, but for his time, it was actually, like, really impressive. So, uh, in this first mission, you know, the first missions, usually in a lot of these games, um, are just, like, build a barracks, harvest 100 resources, you know. But, like, look at what we're doing. We're on, like, a little journey, a little quest. Like, we recruited some villagers. We saved Timmy. We're chasing away bandits now who were trying to uh, take advantage of a bridge. And look at this interesting, like, terrain. Like, now we're fighting, like, in water. This is kind of cool. Like, we're in a river. We're fighting in a riverbed. That's awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and keep our guys at full health. Boink. Um, I like how uh, Arthas here isn't really fighting. He's hanging around the back, just uh, healing people as need be. So, Holy Light. Holy Light that can heal friendly units. Uh, that is an interesting ability. I wonder where that ability comes from. So, like, he just calls upon the power of, of the Lord to cast a, a blinding light down upon a dude, and the light heals you. Interesting. Okay, he, he just leveled up. We can go in here. So we have different abilities we can choose. Divine Shield makes you invincible. This gives other uh, nearby units armor. We're going to go ahead and do that. So now you notice that we kind of have this blue aura and all my I units are uh, glowing. So we'll go ahead and pick up some more items More's here. Honor. So we got healing potions, mana potions. You can use these to heal or restore mana. Um, so... This game, you know, by having heroes, you know, when you actually do, like, play against uh, computers and stuff, there are heroes commanding the opponent's army, too. It kind of changed the game from just, like, a game about building up a mass army to a game about sort of having Thank battlefield you. commanders. Um, it was sort of like... Oh, what did he give me? Nothing? Anything? What item? Bandit Lord quest completed. But what item did I get? I feel like nothing. That's okay. Oh, look! There's orcs! Kill the orcs! Slaughter them! Two arms, my brothers! Damn orcs! Always getting in places they shouldn't be. Attacking us humans. When will it end? I feel like with the power to heal, these orcs have, like, basically... Basically no hope. Um, what's interesting is in Warcraft 2, the footmen and the grunts were basically equivalent units, but now... The uh, grunts. Oh, those guys are like running people over. Now the grunts are actually much tougher than the footmen. And the footmen are actually quite a bit weaker. So in Warcraft 3, they actually really went for asymmetrical unit types, which I definitely appreciate. Um, uh, I, I forgot what I was talking about before. <laughs> oh, yeah, battlefield commanders. Yeah, so like you would never send an army out without a battlefield commander in Warcraft 3 here. You rarely would because you the hero can usually turn the tides of battle. Uh, with the hero's abilities, plus the hero, you want them to be gaining experience points. So you want them out there in battle. Um, the hero can also tank a lot of damage, so you can use them like as a meat shield so that your weaker guys can just do damage and not get killed. So it's interesting, like it really changes the game. Um, I definitely do still like the old school model. You know, like I'm glad that in StarCraft 2 they didn't introduce heroes and stuff. 
But I do kind of like that for Warcraft 3 here, they weren't just like, let's just make StarCraft in 3D. They were like, let's make a, a unique real-time strategy game, you know, and they totally did. Um, oh, the orcs are enslaving people. You know, I always thought the orcs were kind of misunderstood and they weren't really bad guys, but they're freaking enslaving humans, most of them females. This cannot stand. Arthas will not let this pass. So here's a trick. If a guy is getting hurt, you just run him away, and then the AI will stop fighting him. So it's like you can sort of uh, keep juggling these guys around to make sure that uh, none of your guys actually die. Or you can just heal them. That's something that you can do. All right, so this slave master is going down, man. Another tactic you could use when you actually fight like enemy heroes is to surround them with your dudes so that... Oh, this guy's going to die. You can surround them with your dudes so that they actually can't run away. Because, so, having a battlefield commander is good because they can turn the tides of battle or whatever, but it's also sometimes your Achilles heel. Because if your hero goes down, you can just straight up lose the fight. So, sniping enemy heroes is often a tactic you can go for in battles. So, just, like, the fact that you have battlefield commanders is interesting. It, like, really changes up the battle. Compared to, like, a StarCraft battle, you have a bunch of Zerglings and Hydralis fighting each other. Um, or fighting marines, I guess, or zealots or whatever, and it's sort of like they fight to the last man. There's no special unit that's really going to turn the tide of battle. Um, I mean, I guess if you had like a queen or a science vessel or something, it could. But it's not the same as like a hero in Warcraft 3. Plus, the heroes can level up and become quite beefy. They can go all the way up to level 10, which is uh, kind of crazy. Okay, so we just saw the first level there. Um, I love these intros. Like, the world just looks so dang magical. Look at this. This is a world I would like to inhabit. Good it's interesting, because this game is, like, quite old, but it holds up very well, I would say. Um, and notice I just skipped skipped the cutscene there. They did allow you to skip cutscenes. So, um, if that feature is not in a modern game, like, I don't understand, because we had this way back in the day. Um, like, this was what? early 2000s or something. This is an Altar of the Kings, by the way. This is where heroes respawn when they die, so when you uh, you lose a hero, they can resurrect. Um, we're not going to play out this mission because it's just too early of a mission. So I kind of want to jump ahead. So let me actually just sort of skip forward here and find us a slightly more interesting mission to check out. All right, here we go. We're fighting the literal dead. The dead have risen. A bunch of skeletons and zombies. It's like a... Uh, the apocalypse, man. We have a uh, dwarven rifleman here. We have priests who who heal, which is totally not OP, right? I mean, having infinite health. What's what's OP about that? Uh, we have to hold on for 30 minutes until Uther returns. What ails you? So we pretty much just got to survive. Um, sounds easy enough, right? But uh, not necessarily. Okay, so. Basics of Warcraft 3, build up your economy because you need to be able to pay for things. Justice so you want to have an economy uh, to pay for things. That's that's the first step. Uh, the second step is build lots of units. So we're starting with our economy here. Now in Warcraft 3, you are limited by food. You can only build units if you have enough food. I think in StarCraft you have supply. It's a very similar idea. Um... The range units, by the way, in Warcraft 3, I feel like are less effective than in other Blizzard games. So, like, in StarCraft, like, almost everything is ranged, you know? Like, uh, well, I guess there are Zealots and, and Zerglings that aren't ranged, but most things are ranged. Hey, look, these guys are, like, staying in formation. That's interesting. I never noticed that before. Like, they just, they want to be in formation. Um, but, yeah, the, the ranged units in... Uh, in Warcraft 3 here, just feel a little less effective. Like, having just a bunch of riflemen doesn't always necessarily do very much. Oh my god, we got ghouls! Ghouls are attacking! We gotta, we gotta kill these things, man. They will, they will tear down our towers here. Our towers, luckily, are actually quite beefy. Another thing that's interesting about Warcraft 3 here is the buildings are actually quite tough. Um, there are siege weapons, like catapults and stuff, that do insane damage versus buildings. And so health on buildings will drop really fast if one of those units is attacking. But otherwise, buildings are actually pretty weak. They're kind of... Kind of weak, you know? So, I don't know. Um, let's see. Call to arms. Okay, we need we need upgrades here. 
We can upgrade. Yes, yeah, so let's get better swords. And this, we need a workshop. So we're going to keep building peasants. We're going to put a peasant on farm duty soon. I like how our, our base is in this, like, interesting little town. Oh, God, we got we got more ghouls. Bunch of ghouls. This guy's taking forever to repair that building. Um, I guess what you could do is you could simply build a bunch of these guard towers, and that would probably keep you safe, but I'm going to choose not to here. I kind of want my army to do stuff. And in fact, what I want to do is an expedition here. So let's just let's just go for it, man. I feel like Arthas is pretty powerful in these early levels. I'm sure... I'm sure he can take care of business. So let's just go exploring. I mean, there's definitely got to be stuff for us to find out here. Um, so the neutral units in this game, I think, are called creeps. And you can go and just sort of farm them and get experience. And, man, he's a level 5. Jeez. Level 6 allows him to literally resurrect the dead en masse, which is cool. Let's go over here. Oh, look, there's an enemy base. Should we attack? Hey, look, there's a murloc knight. Oh, look, murlocs! Let's slaughter a tribe of murlocs, a tribe of sentient fish people. They disgust me. All right. Oh, they throw nets on us. There's all sorts of, like, interesting abilities in this game. Okay, we just got to keep an eye on everyone's health here. I have not needed... I'm going to heal this guy just to use some mana. Use up the mana. Alright. Oh look, I think they were trapping someone in there. Please take this item. Ooh, a local farmer. Justice shall be. But did he give me? Did he give me boots of speed? Oh no, there's something else here too. A potion of mana. I'm here to help. Alright, we got our potion. We saved a villager. Let's continue exploring here. I guess since I am going on like a wild expedition. We should totally build a... Uh, oh, God. Oh, God, that doesn't look good. We don't want to commit to that. Although I will kind of lure them out. Yes, sucker. Oh, we just killed, like, one of their wizards. All right, whatever. We're going in. Oh, no, we're not. I just lost a guy. Our town is under siege. Oh, we're fine. Okay, we got to build up a big force and invade that. Okay. Kill them! Kill them all! So notice that I'm, like, gaining experience as we kill enemies here. Like, when that guy dies, see, like, notice my experience is going up. Just gonna continue to sort of kite these guys out of their base. Slaughter them. Skeletons are coming to defend the evil undead base. Okay. Let's back off just a little bit here. And notice also that we're in a we're it's nighttime now. Like there's a day night cycle here and everything like that. Okay, I have so much money. I really need to start spending this stuff appropriately. Okay, build farm. And this upgrades. Okay, we're just gonna start building a bunch of peasants here so that we can actually use our money. So my strategy oh wait, we need a workshop. Alright. And we need footmen. Low upkeep. So here is a thing in the Warcraft. The more units you have, the more kind of taxes you pay. And so if you have uh, if you have too many units, you actually earn less money from farming and stuff. So a trick of the game is to try and stay in low upkeep as long as possible. And then when you... Uh, when you actually sort of want to build a big army to just sort of like rush for it, you know, so you kind of like try and stay uh, paying as little tax as possible for as long as possible. And then when you got to pay tax, you just go all in. So we're going to give that a shot here. I'm just trying to like upgrade some defenses. We've got some dudes. Okay, this guy's going to also build a farm over here. No, build a farm here and then here. And here, here. Okay, so he's just gonna, he's on farm patrol. He's just gonna build a ton of farms. Meanwhile, we need all of our new peasants on gold. And I think we'll have a humming economy in a second here. Humming economy. Oh man, more lumber. 60 lumber. Okay. Well, we're in low upkeep. So let's just go nuts with the footmen. 
Because why not? I should probably build a second barracks. Yes, so it's a, it's totally a newbie move to uh, queue up like seven footmen at one barracks where you should actually build like four or five barrackses. But I have like no lumber. So uh, where's it under siege? Yeah, I feel like we got that under control. Oh, he's raising the dead. Oh God. Every time one dies, two take its place. They're like Hydra. El Hydra. In ghoul form. Look at that. Every time one a ghoul dies, two show up instead. Two skeletons. Oh god. Okay, well they're attacking the, the peons or the peasants at least. Tarthus, we've spotted an undead Ooh. caravan carrying a large load of plagued grain. That caravan must be stopped before it reaches the outer villages. Done. I will slaughter those, that caravan easily. Um, alright. Also, let's upgrade this and this. Oh, they're attacking my dudes. I wish the footmen could get experience, too. I like how it's, like, only Arthas who learns from battle. All the other guys are like, I don't know, like, just nothing clicks, nothing makes sense. Despite all my years of fighting. Uh, just, you know, can't can't clue in to, like, better ways of doing things. It's only Arthas. Uh, increases lumber. I actually do want that. Um, let's keep this going. Where are the forces under attack? Oh, God. Why, why are those guys in there? Who told you to run? Oh, my God. I lost the priest. Who told you guys to run into the enemy base? That was a really stupid move. Can we even build uh, Arcane Sanctum? Train priests. Okay, we can do that. And we can train some priests up to replace the stupid ones that died. <laughs> all right, good, good, good. We have all sorts of defensive structures and towers. The mortar team is basically what allows you to take down buildings. I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. But let's go with, train a few more of these guys. Okay, we're slowly running out of money, which is good. In a game like this, you don't want to have a surplus of money. Research complete. Uh, improves hit points of buildings. Yeah, go ahead, because that'll improve all my guard towers and stuff. Now, normally you can upgrade the uh, town hall or whatever. But I guess we're in too early of a level. Uh, to be able to do that. Oh, you know what? I feel like I do need a mortar team or two. Uh, where... Where's that workshop? D didn't I build a workshop? Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. Build me two... One mortar team. That's all I can afford. Okay, one. Let's heal this guy. Is there danger? Um, oh! That's a big guy. This guy is an abomination. He's a bunch of corpses that have been sewn together. Which, if that doesn't sound creepy to you... I mean, it is creepy, I'm here to tell you. Oh, he just went down like nothing. I think you can upgrade those guys so when they die, they have, like, a death cloud, and it, like, poisons the air around them. Which is kind of cool. Um, ooh, Sorceress. Can initially cast Slow, which decreases enemy movement speed. Can learn Invisibility and Polymorph. I like that. Mortar combat. I forgot about that. The, the units in this game have such interesting, uh, you know, like sound effects. Um, oh, what is this? Let's uh, let's engage here. All right, Arthas, go ahead and kill this guy. So I'm gonna start to selectively target guys. Going for like the weaker guys first is like a you know the powerful but weak spellcasters is a good way to do things. Let's um, get, get over here. So these guys, by the way, every character in, in Warcraft you can click on and they will actually like say interesting things. Where's me drink? I can't shoot straight unless I've had a pint. Oh, there's me drink. Get in my belly! <laughs> Guns don't kill people. I do! <laughs> well, I guess he's a, he's a member of the NRA, as it turns out. All right. So, I mean, you can keep going. All the units in this game, uh, you know, you can go ahead and listen to what they say. 
But here's what we're going to do. We're going to start sieging this village over here, this undead village. And, okay, we want, like, another priest. A bunch more of these guys. One of these guys. Alright. Ooh! I can actually now resurrect people from the... Oh my god, that looks... Like a big group of people. Okay. So actually, let's do this. Keep everyone, as many people, alive as we can. Oh god. I think there's like an enemy hero there. There totally is. Okay, here we go. We're gonna revive the dead. Woo! Okay. It's not going super well. I wanna like... Oh my god, a level 10? Are you kidding? Look at that. That's a level 10 uh, enemy hero. No wonder they were owning me. I was like, I should try and snipe the enemy hero. Uh, not when they're level 10. Okay. So here's what we learned. We are woefully underleveled. God. Okay. Uh, oh, and I lost my mortar team too. That was a, a terrible disaster of a fight. Town is under siege. Oh no. I feel like we're going to fail this mission. Uh, you know what? If we do... We, if we fail, we fail. I, I kind of feel like, you know what, this is just a showcase mission anyway. Oh god, are we, are we getting overrun? We totally are. Come on, Arthas. Oh no, Arthas! Okay, stay alive. Turn invincible. I'm here to help. Let's try Let's try and snipe this, this enemy hero. I have a feeling that maybe we can, actually. Of course. Bonk. Because he is at half health. I'm here to help. And we have more mana. I'm just gonna keep. I'm just owning this guy. Come on, die! Die! Oh, he's gonna kill me! No! Whoa, wait, whoa, wait! We might be able to kill him! We might be able to kill him! Get to it! Ah, oh, we killed a level 10! Okay, it cost us our entire army, which is actually a terrible trade. We totally screwed up, but we killed a level 10. Anyway, now you can revive Arthas. I feel like. This was an interesting story mission, but it's going so badly that I think we should transition into um, one other level. So, in, in a way, it feels like this video is going by really fast. But as I say, we're going to check out the four different races of this game. So there's actually, like, a lot to see. Um, you know, it, this, is a, this is a defense level, basically. Oh, you know what? We could have expanded up here, too. Um, this is a story campaign. You know, we saw the first level... We saw this this second level here where it's sort of like, you know, they give you like an interesting, um, you know, an interesting uh, goal or mission. Oh my god, that building is totally about to go down. Uh, but in the actual, you know, where a lot of people played Warcraft 3 was basically in, you know, player versus player matches. And you can play those against the computer still today. So, you know what, without further ado... Why don't we abandon this mission, which is going so well that it's clear that we're going to pass it, and uh, go into a custom game where we can just sort of explore as the humans and be in some big battles and fight against basically some equally matched opponents. Because as interesting as these campaign levels are, um, obviously the enemy starting at a level 10 hero is a little overpowered. So starting with an equally powered opponent, let's actually go see some battles. All right, so we just took a peek at the campaign, checking out two of the levels. You guys get the idea. Now to go into the custom game. Now, the interesting thing about custom games, by the way, is that you can play both sort of like free-for-all battles, and you can also play like custom missions. Maybe I'll show you this real quick um, before we actually end today's video. Uh, there's an edited version of War Chasers, because I opened it up in an editor, because this is actually a map not meant for a single player, so I open up in an editor and put some, uh, some tombs to level you up right at the beginning, so that one person could go through this, because, truth be told, I meant to record, uh, my first episode on this yesterday, but I went in and I tried War Chasers, and I kind of got addicted to it, and I played it all day. Didn't make a single video, so, uh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to try out the Crucible here, and we're going to put on a number of computer opponents. You know, we'll have two normal opponents and a handful of easy opponents because I'm pretty rusty. Uh, we're not going to fill up every single spot. We're going to be playing against six computers, no, five computers and us. 
races will all be random, except for us. We're going to be playing as humans. Um, and actually, you know what? Why don't we play a team game? That would be kind of fun, right? So we're going to put the computers on teams together. So team one is me and a normal computer. Team two is a normal computer and an easy computer. And team three, these are the suckers. These guys are uh, just easy and easy. This is the easy team. So this will allow us to kind of explore a little more. So su suggested players, free for all or two versus two or four versus four. How about two versus two versus two? Check out the advanced options for a minute. Lock teams together, full shared unit control, no random hero, no. Um, all right, let's go ahead and start the game. And off we go. So you can set up all sorts of different uh, games. And, uh, of course, you know, back in the day, like, you you could play this online and stuff like that. And I played, I definitely did play this online. So here is our, we are allied with the Night Elves. The humans and the Night Elves form an uneasy alliance. Do they have what it takes to fight off the White Walkers and the dead that have come for everyone? Hopefully it's a more impressive battle than the last episode we got of Game of Thrones with the White Walkers. Which is a total letdown. Let's not even get into that. Um, so there are four races in this game, as I've already said. We're going to be checking out the other races um, uh, you know, in the subsequent videos. Interesting trivia, though. There was actually supposed to be five races. So the four races are humans, undead, night elves, and orcs. And there were supposed to be demons as a fifth race. And demons kind of just got folded into the undead slash they kind of became like a neutral race. Uh, let's get a barracks started oh, up there. here. And let's also get this guy working on a farm. I'm going to sort of have the farms near the front line to kind of create like a pseudo wall to keep enemies from running in and like attacking my uh, my mineral line here. Um, but yeah, there were supposed to be five races. They cut it down to four. I mean, I think four is incredibly ambitious. It's interesting, like back in the day when the first Warcraft came out, it was basically a clone of, uh, you know, Dune 2 only in a medieval fantasy land. And that's fine. Like, I was a big fan of Dune 2. I was a big fan of uh, Warcraft. But in Dune 2 and in Warcraft 1, all the sides are balanced by basically having all the units just be clones of each other. You know, it's like there wasn't very much variety in the kinds of uh, items, or, or not items, units that each side had. So, like, the footmen and the, the, the grunts, the, the orc grunts, were just literally carbon copies of each other. They had they did almost the exact same amount of damage. Um, we also need an altar, actually. See, look how rusty I am. Like, I don't even remember what I need to be building. My night elf buddy is actually doing a lot better than me right now. Um, but yeah, so it's like, it's really easy to balance two races when you give them the exact same units. And that's basically the tactic that Warcraft 1 took. Warcraft 2 mixed it up a little bit. But, you know, the grunts and the footmen were still largely equivalent. The knights and the ogres were pretty equivalent. They had different spells and stuff, but they were fairly similar. Warcraft 3 here is where they really broke the mold. I think they practiced with StarCraft figuring out how to create three races that were very different from each other. Like, the fundamentals of how the races even played were different. Um... And then what they did with Warcraft 3 is they were like, hey, we just balanced three races in StarCraft. Let's balance five. And then they realized that was a little too ambitious. They cut it down to four, which is still crazy to have four balanced right. races is nuts. Um, and what's interesting is I think like I was I was a big fan of uh, Command and Conquer back in the day. And I liked it more than Warcraft 2 at the time because I kind of felt like Warcraft 2, all the units are basically just copies of each other. Uh, we're actually going to pick the Mountain King here to mix it up. I really like this guy. The Wizard is actually pretty cool, too. The Paladin is basically uh, Arthas, which we already saw. But I uh, really was a fan of the Mountain King. And I think the Wizard back in the day. So we'll see if we can get two heroes going and we'll go for those, oh, too. Um, but yeah, I was more of a fan of Command & Conquer because I liked the fact that they were asymmetrical sides, you know, and the Brotherhood of Nod had, like, the Obelisk of Light and stealth tanks and stuff, whereas GDI had, like, mammoth tanks and stuff. Like, they they played very differently from one another. Um, and I didn't get that, that sense of, you know, distinction with Warcraft 2. Then Warcraft 3 came out, and, of, well, actually, before that, even StarCraft came out, and once Blizzard set their mind to it, they created very distinct, um, very distinct unit types. Actually, we're getting a little bit of a, 
a glimpse at the units we will be seeing in the fourth video, which is the Night Elves. So we got a Druid with some Night Elf uh, archers. And notice they are stealth. At nighttime, the Night Elves can turn invisible. Little ability of theirs. Pretty handy power if you think about it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and build that. Okay, let's build a lumber mill over here. And then we'll go ahead and harvest lumber. And these guys are going to build... Got to stay on top of these buildings, guys. Um, I guess we'll build a blacksmith shop there. All right, here's our first squad of dudes. And for our first ability, we are going to take the Storm Bolt, which basically allows him to throw his hammer. It's kind of like throwing Thor's hammer, and it just clobbers guys and knocks them unconscious. So, oh god. Um, so, basically, in... I don't even think I can target these guys. I can't. In Warcraft here, in Warcraft 3 here, they have these, like, neutral creeps guarding, uh, like, expansions, guarding, uh, you know, uh, like, shops and all sorts of stuff. Usually you would learn which neutral creeps were guarding what. So these guys were actually quite powerful. They're kind of killing my guys. I kind of want to keep these guys alive. So there we go. All right, we, we successfully killed them. Yikes. I feel like I would not have attacked uh, those guys had I known that those were the guys who were guarding that. I would have gone for a different area, but, you know, we, we killed those guys. We, uh, we, we you know, killed the, we killed the creeps. It's the most important thing. The footmen are, like, severely injured, so that's not great. But we did level up to a level two. Um, now, I actually want to work fast here towards that. So, I, I want to have priests to help keep my guys alive here. Um, let's do this. And I guess we should build a couple riflemen, too. Or, you know what? Actually, we need a couple footmen, because the, rif the riflemen will have a lot more longevity than the footmen. The footmen are going to die pretty easily. Now, an interesting thing about the creeps. So, the creeps, you can see there's like a little orange dot on the map here. That means that there's creeps. Normally what you do with an early level hero is you kind of run around and you level them up. Notice that these guys are sleeping. I can decide whether to engage them or not. I don't think I'm ready just yet. Oh god, and the sun is rising. They're about to wake up. So yeah, there's like day-night cycles. There's NPCs that sleep. I'll find a village. There's like a, like a shop here you can go and you can buy items for your hero. So I have a circlet of nobility. Increases my strength, agility, and intelligence by two. And you can see you have agility and strength and intelligence. So it really is very RPG-ish, which is kind of cool. All right. Uh, we uh, need farms. So we have tons of gold. Oops. Uh, hold on. Do this. And do this. Then do this. And do this. There we go. All right. He is on farm duty. Let's go ahead and upgrade this. Once this upgrades, by the way, we can get a second hero. Which will be awesome. Okay, let's go like this. Okay. And I can't build healers just yet. Alright. Well, you know what? There's there's an easy way to reduce our supply cap. Because right now we're at the supply cap. We can't build any more units. And that's for units to die. So, let's just do it. Let's just run into battle here. And let's stun these guys. Stun that guy. And let's try and uh, just juggle around the low health guys to make sure they don't die. We're actually doing not a bad job of it. I'm gonna stun this guy again. So the hammer that he throws like stuns the enemies, which you'll notice. Ooh, a Tomb of Intelligence. That just fully upgrades uh, some stats. Makes my, my, my mountain giant, my mountain king just become became more intelligent. Ooh, we have a healing potion, which actually only heals only heals, you know, um, your hero, not any of the units, which is what I really want. All right. So things are going well. I do want to upgrade to knights at some point, but my immediate priority is priests. Priests to heal. I could also get a paladin, actually, to heal, but I kind of want to show you guys the wizard. So I, I think I often went for the mountain king first, the paladin second to heal guys and then i went for the knight third and i think guys will slowly yeah look guys will slowly regenerate health 
by themselves, actually, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, let's continue keeping these things upgrading. And... All right. Now, when you have two heroes, you can have them run around together. And it is quite powerful, but they also share experience. So you don't always necessarily want them to be running around together. Okay. Uh, let's see how this is going. Stun these guys. Oh, God. Okay, one guy died. Run back. Oh, he's stuck. Okay, that guy's going to die, too. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Just stun as many guys as we can. Cloak of Shadows. Per well, I don't even know how you say that. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Look at all those. Uh-oh. Uh, okay. Uh, we we got to go, man. Now, you can actually teleport. Oh, my God. This is actually really bad. Um, okay. You know what we're going to do? I was going to say we should teleport to our ally, but I don't think we can. Level four. Holy crap. Damn it. I don't have any mana stuff. Oh, God. Okay. We're... Okay, that guy actually caught up really fast. Let's see if we can, like, kill the heroes. Oh, this guy is really low on health. Kill him. Kill him. Oh, wait, that's our guy. <laughs> oh, we just killed an enemy hero. Okay, we can actually use our wizard to summon a guy. No, it's chaos in here, guys. Oh, yeah, the, the enemy hero can't flee either. Oh, we totally got him. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we killed we killed both enemy heroes, but like their army is still alive and they kind of wiped out our army. So let's see what we can do here. Uh, let's like stun that guy. Okay, this guy's getting upgraded. Let's do Brilliance Aura. That seems helpful. Why not? Notice that the Night Elf building is actually like attacking the enemies here. Oh god. We can actually teleport out of here if things get too dicey for us. Let's summon a water elemental. Boom. Boom. All right, you know, you know what we're not doing as we're defending uh, our ally here is we are not building units, which is going to bite us. So we really need to, we need to do this. Okay, those guys are still okay. We need uh, units, and we need workshop. What do we need? I want knights. Uh, castle, lumber mill, blacksmith. Oh wait, how do I get a castle? Oh, I just upgrade. All right, go ahead and do that. I need priests. My guys look like they're doing okay. Footmen, a couple of riflemen. All right, how are we doing over here? Hey, we successfully defended. We not only defended, but we slaughtered two heroes. Okay, so guys, that's a, that's a big deal. I, I I wasn't able to make a big deal out of it while while it was happening. <laughs> By the way, I like how our whole army went into battle and only two guys come back. But yeah, that is a big deal. When a hero gets killed, they have to be resummoned. It costs 500 gold and it takes forever. Now you might think, okay, well, whatever. You just like respawn the hero. It's like, yeah, but it's not that simple because the amount of time it takes to respawn the hero, the enemies are out there leveling up. So it's like they were level four heroes when they went down. By the time they are resummoned, we might be level sixes, you know, if we're fast about it. So basically, sniping enemy heroes can be really damaging. Um, plus, we could attack their base right now, and they would have far fewer, far, far less capacity to defend themselves because they're lacking, you know, uh, a hero. Uh, that said... I don't know where their base is or anything like that, so uh, we're just going to let them go. They got off easy this time. I, <laughs> when when I don't know where you are, I can't exact vengeance. Plus, they kind of wiped out my army, so it's not like I had an army to go in and, uh, you know, get back at them. But anyway. Okay, so we're continuing to upgrade here. Keep the upgrade train flowing. You know what we really need to do? We need to expand. You know, there was a there was a time when I could like play this game like crazy. Like I could take on a couple of computers and like like I'm not even expanding. Oh my god, the undead! We have found the undead. Um oh god, there's like not only have we found the undead, but they have a dragon with them. Uh is that on their side? Oh god, we're in a lot of trouble. 
Oh no, I think the computers that we wiped out were the easy computers. These guys do not look easy. Okay, here's something you can do when you're in a lot of trouble. Um, you can call to arms and all your peasants turn into fighters. All right, let's see if we can uh, destroy this dragon at least. Oh, we are destroying it. Okay, you, you get back over here. Um, okay, all the peasants got called to arms. Now we're just going to send them back to work. Thanks, guys. False alarm. Uh, so you can basically like, summon your peasants into a militia, which is kind of cool. All right. So we have we have like a standing army here that's kind of impressive. It's kind of a mixed up army here though. So here's what we're going to do. Um, let's see here. You, you and the priests will hang out together, and me and everyone else will hang out together. And actually, I'm gonna take this guy out of group one. You, there we go. Okay. So all the ranged and, and healing units and the wizards they're all hanging out together. And now we can build knights. Um, increase the maximum hit points of knights. I mean, yeah, why not? Oh, I guess that's why. We need gold. Um, oh, okay, that's actually building. I didn't know if the dead came in and wiped that out. Oh, look at what's going on in here. There's a big battle in the middle. Oh my god, a level five. Can we kill this guy? Oh, he's gonna die anyway. Oh, there's no fun in that. There's no, there's no glory in killing that guy. Um, there are these fountains that will, like, heal mana and stuff. Um, oh, over here, this is a mercenary camp. You can actually hire mercenary units. So if we go over here with our heroes. You have to have a hero near a building before you can use it. But you can hire troll berserkers. Oh, God, it's an ambush. It's an ambush. Let's kill this guy. Um, let's summon this. Um, oh god. Um, oh no, they're gonna kill my hero, damn it! <laughs> I was not paying enough attention. I was not paying enough attention. Uh-oh. Okay. Everyone, we're going home! We're getting the hell out of here. Oh my god, they totally... We have no upkeep now. So many of our guys died. We have no upkeep. Alright, now you get to see what happens when you lose a hero. You gotta summon them back. My, and it only costs 350 because, uh, because basically, uh, I, uh, he was so low level. My God. Uh, we, we suck. Oh God, look at this. Man, the, my ally is doing actually pretty good. Okay, here's my new tactic. Here's my new tactic. I'm not going to explore the map by myself anymore. I'm going to go hang out with my ally and we're going to do stuff together. We're going to have like a big old ally party. Oh God. Um, did he lose his hero? I can't tell. No, his hero's still alive. Um, they have a level five hero? That is ridiculous. Okay, we're going to go hang out with our ally. Damn it, I can't believe we lost our Mount King. He even had a potion of healing and I just didn't use it because I'm stupid. I, I panicked, is, is realistically what happened. So I have a level 2 arc, arc mage. That's that's all I got. Whatever. That's not very good. Um, and we're we're slowly running out of money, too. Man, this is taking forever to build. No, so humans, you can bring a bunch of peasants, and they can all like work on building a building if you want to build it faster, but it costs more money. I totally should have done that, but I did not. All right. Job done. Uh, build five peasants. I think five peasants to a gold mine is all you Require need. Alright, we're moving out together. Or are you guys even moving out? I can't even tell. I await your command. Well, I await okay, your everyone command. come together. To I just work. have like one big group of dudes. I'm not like, uh, I'm not organizing my groups very effectively here. So here's our goal. Here's our goal, to go on a grand adventure with our buddy, and I think our goal is going to be to wipe out one computer base, or just, just like, getting one big fight. Um, I think that this is actually going to be a much bigger fight than I thought. Uh, two versus two versus two. This could take literally, like, over an hour itself to beat. So I think we're not going to beat this custom game mode. Who noticed the druid there can, like, summon treants, which are, like, uh, trees to come fight for him. 
which is pretty cool. So I think he's he's just hunting creeps. Um, <laughs> sounds like something you do at the bar. I'm going to hunt some creeps, you know, like... I mean, I guess you don't want to hunt creeps. You want to hunt, like, good, respectable men. Um, all right. So, group one. And... Group two. All right. All right, don't... Don't leave me, bud. We we gotta hang out together. We gotta be we gotta be allies in this. This okay. One of these is gonna produce knights. One is gonna produce the other guys and healers. All right. So I think this could work for us. I think staying with our buddy is like a good tactic. When you're no good at a game, just stay with someone else who knows what's going on. So I'm just going to be like the ultimate wingman to him. And we are going to hunt creeps. It's like going out to the club. Me and him are going to go hunt some creeps. Come on, man. Tell me what you want me to do. You have the better army, so you're in charge. I'm just going to do whatever you tell me to do. Uh, two. The only thing with like a computer ally is you can't like coordinate an attack together. It's not like I can tell him, all right, let's go attack the orange player. You know, he's just going to do whatever he's going to do. And it's up to me to follow him if I want to be in on the action, which is just how my normal friendships in life work. What do you need? All right. Okay, he is he is going for it, man. Okay, notice I'm in high upkeep now. So my gold mines are only re are only returning like uh 60% or 40% of, like, what I'm actually harvesting. Um, I want to kill this guy. Boom. So uh, go ahead and keep the mana train flowing. And where did that enemy hero go? Boom! Oh, we just sniped him. We just sniped the enemy hero. That is how you do it. Okay, notice that my guy's a level 5 and a level 3. Yes. So this is why I like having the Mountain King. He can throw his Thor hammer and just basically, uh, you know, like one-shot enemy heroes. So if enemy heroes get too low on health, we can just crush them. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, a level eight. I don't know if I want to tango with that. Uh, maybe I do. Okay, my ally's going for it, which means I'm going for it. Oh, look, he, he did like a howl and all my guys are upgraded. I mean, all of our guys, I should say. Um, you go ahead. Summon a water elemental, wherever you are. Go ahead. Go ahead. I like the priest because you can also, like, heal your heroes. But, okay, I think you can throw the hammer at buildings, too. Yeah, you totally can. Oh, yeah, we're taking down one of their expansions. Um, yeah, easy. Our guys aren't even dying. Yes. All right, uh, a bunch of reinforcements have shown up. I like how that guy like sees the battles. Like, nope, he turns around and just flees. All right, this is actually a good. Turns out this is a good uh, balance balance of of abilities we got going on here. Um, how about we go this way? There we go. Like, I want that, like, level 8 hero to, like, show his face. Oh, we can turn into the Mountain King, too. All right, let's do it, man. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Throw the hammer! Oh, the, the my hero is, like, stuck way over here. Throw the hammer! I think we killed him. He's totally dead! We killed another hero! Man, we are a hero slaughtering machine. Look, watch the Mountain King. He becomes big and made out of stone. Totally gonna destroy this thing here. Oh, what the heck? This guy's still alive. Well, not for long. There, we just stunned him, and he's dead. Man, sniping heroes! I forgot how fun it was. So, yes, the, uh... The, um... What you call it? Uh, the the hero that we just killed, that like big minotaur guy, he basically has an ability to um, come back from the dead if he dies once. So that's like his ability; he can resurrect. But it did not help him. Did not help him resurrect enough. All right. 
We're, we're crushing this, man. Okay, hold on. I don't want my guys to get all scattered here because, like, I feel like they, they need to regenerate health and stuff. So we're going to do this. Uh, more farms. That's actually okay. I want my guys to have a chance to heal. We have priests for a reason. I'm going to let the... I'm going to let my computer ally here just crush the city itself. I'm just going to... Oh, God. Enemy reinforcements. Let's see if we can uh, snipe another hero. Stun him? Man, it stuns him for like half of his life. And by the time he's not stunned anymore, like he can't even like run away if he wanted. Down you go! All my experience comes from hunting enemy heroes. Um, I'm not even using, this is like an area of effect stun. I should be using more of this. Don't even need to. Um, we've kind of decimated the purple character. Although, interestingly enough, like, we destroyed his whole army and everything like that. But, it's like, he could rebuild. Like, his base is still functional. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and everyone just team up. Okay, I knew that there were five peasants not doing anything. You guys go collect stuff over there. Let's go ahead and make our knights uber knights. More armor. We need some knights to replace those that fell in battle. So, what's going on over here, by the way? Oh, it's a whole other base. All right, we, we successfully messed up the purple guy. I feel I feel satisfied about that. Um, so, the undead, by the way, notice how it's all, like, creepy and stuff over here. The undead basically infect the land uh, that they they sort of take over, which is kind of cool. It's, it's very sort of suitable for, like, you know, the undead. Like, what are they going to do? They're going to infect the land. Okay, we're going to have this. Now, notice that we're at 69 supply. If we go above that, we're going to have to start paying more upkeep. So it's basically why, at this stage, I'm not going to build any more units. Instead, I'm just going to try and keep the ones I have alive and focus on upgrades here. Man, that was so fun crushing the purple guy. I kind of want to do it to someone else. So the purple guy now, he is not going to be able to help out his ally. So, all right, blue guy. That first expedition was so successful. We have a level 7 Mountain King, a level 5 Archmage. Teleports 24 players to a friendly ground unit. That's kind of a terrible ultimate. So, the abilities that all the ki that the heroes have, there's like, th there's three normal abilities that can be upgraded to level 1, 2, and 3. And then there's like an ultimate. The Mountain King's ultimate is he turns into some like giant oversized beast. And he just does extra damage, and he has extra armor, and he's just really good. So another reason why I like the Mountain King. Oh, I see some enemies walking around. I think I can take this one solo, because I don't think this guy has an ally anymore, and we did crush his expansion. So what do you guys think? Are we feeling bold? Oh, my ally's going to come after all. Well, it's okay. If you come, come if you want. Stay home if you don't want to come. It doesn't matter. We will... Oh, look, there's guys praying near a gold mine. Let's just slaughter them. The guy's like, oh, my God, I was just praying, man. So the undead, this is how they, they get uh, gold out of a mine. They, like, infect it, and then they just sort of, uh, like, chant around it, and that somehow gets the gold. It's kind of handy. You can actually just sort of build gold mines all over the map. You don't need to build a town hall or whatever, but it's kind of annoying um, because they can do that. So they're kind of like the Zerg. The undead are like broadly like the Zerg, I guess I would say. The humans are kind of like the Terrans, sort of. The orcs are also kind of like the Terrans. Uh, the night elves, I suppose, are like the Protoss. I mean, these are very broad similarities. None of these races are that much like, you know, their StarCraft equivalents. But anyway, I'm getting kind of antsy for another battle. I did say it would probably take a long time to, like, uh, fully, you know, play through this entire battle. So we probably weren't going to do it. But at the same time, I sort of feel like, um, you know, oh, here we go. Here we go. I just want a big battle, man. Okay. Oh, I think I did. I, I thought that was a hero, but that was just a banshee. Oh, God. Um, how about let's do this? And summon this, and throw this at this guy. Wait, throw it! 
Throw it! Surround the enemy hero! Don't let him get away! You're letting him get away. Oh, he's immune to magic! What is this nonsense? Okay, here we go. We're gonna mess with the, the pathing of these uh, AI units. There we go. That catapult's done. Alright, so... The enemy got away because he was immune to magic, that jerk. But it's not gonna save him. Uh, I think I summoned, you yeah, know, one of these. Um, can we get up over here? And boom! Yeah, that did not do what I wanted. Man, we got these guys on the run. Come on! Uh, the fact that he's immune to magic is actually super annoying. Okay, we gotta, we gotta, like, take some time to heal here. Everyone's, like, cursed. They have, like, skulls and bones over their head. Okay, what's our tactic here? How about we just summon elementals? We summon water itself to fight for us. Okay, our guys are kind of decimating that big fat guy that ran out. Okay, there's the enemy. We got him. Oh god, he ran away. Okay, we got this, we got this. I, I just wanted to snipe another enemy. Another enemy hero. Come on! Oh, we're here destroying your base. Better come protect it. Better come stop us. Better come stop us. Oh god. Where did he go? Also, where's my ally? Well... I feel like he is he is neglecting his the the alliance that we we set up man it was based on based on us mutually helping each other defeat the undead meanwhile he's he's totally neglecting his side of the bargain well he is expanding so that's something so he's taking care of the economy while I take care of the dead seems seems like an unequal trade oh here we go Boom. All right, level six. We got gotcha. you. You're going down. Oh, yeah. Instant, instant kill. Um, what's... Uh, we're not using the, the AoE ability. Let's just give him a passive ability here. All right, let's destroy this thing. So they can't build any more units. So I feel like at this point we have basically won the game. It's just a matter of time. Oh, like they even have like bears fighting for them and stuff. Um, we could we could sort of wear down the enemy. So we'd have to like go into their bases, uh, try and like wipe them out and stuff. Uh, it, it would happen in time, and we have a level eight mountain king who can just do this. But Osmodos, look at him—he's a beast. We can just run in here. I think this is where we will cut it for today. Oh, I think my ally, like, ran in here or something? I don't even know. Uh, basically, each of the other teams has suffered a crippling loss. So it's just a matter of time until we, like, wear them down. Um, anyway, this has been Warcraft 3. As I say, we're going to have a week of Warcraft, which basically means for the next four days, uh, every day I'll be releasing a new video. We're going to be checking out a new race, which means coming up next is the undead we've played as the humans we're now going to turn coat and uh turn to the undead so you get to actually see these guys from the first hand see what makes them tick you know their likes their dislikes um you know how they live their lives and all that stuff or their their unlives because they're dead I, I don't even know uh anyway i'm just kind of throwing my army away here uh oh look at this somebody tried to attack my ally but he totally got killed Anyway, um, if you've been enjoying this video, don't forget to tune in tomorrow to see the Undead uh, episode. Um, and as always, um, I hope I've made today entertaining for you. I hope you've learned a little bit about Warcraft 3 if you've never played it before. And if you have, I hope this brought back some fond memories. It certainly did for me, and I'm excited to try things from the Undead perspective. Anyway, guys, until next time, you all take care of yourselves. Um, don't get hero sniped, because uh, it sucks. But if you are doing the sniping, it rules. And uh, otherwise, take care of yourselves. All right, guys. Peace. By the way, just for funsies, here's that uh, use map settings map I was telling you about. So this is kind of like the RPG maps that people would make in StarCraft, only because it's Warcraft and you actually have 
um, like hero units, you can create some really impressive RPGs. This one was made for four players. I actually edited some of the abilities and stuff. I was messing around with it. Um, and I gave myself a free level up to level five because I'm playing it solo, so it's kind of impossible to play by yourself. But you kind of run through a dungeon and you encounter, it's kind of like Gauntlet. You encounter these like enemy spawners. And you could just sit here and farm these murlocs forever until you level up to level six. I gave myself the free experience so I didn't have to do that. But you can just basically destroy this if you don't want to fight the murlocs. And when you destroy things, you get like manuals of health and stuff. You end up finding all sorts of items. It's basically like playing a little game of Dungeons and Dragons. So I have like a stun ability. I can stun all the enemies. And yeah, I, I literally, I, I wanted to record my Warcraft video yesterday. And instead I ended up playing this for about six hours. Uh, I played it through multiple times with different characters, messing around. I failed a few times. Uh, I had a load of fun. So talk about a game like standing up the test of time. Like not only is there a great campaign, not only are there great custom games and stuff like that, but there's a whole little RPG here for you to play. And this is just one. I could have gone on the internet and downloaded tons more use map settings maps and explored all sorts of other different kinds of RPGs. But I specifically didn't because I realized I could basically do that all day. And I probably would if, uh, if I had the chance, so... Uh, anyway, I just thought that was kind of cool. Use map settings. It's a thing. It was one of the fun things that we did in Warcraft 3. Well, that and slaughtering gnolls, because listening to those dog men die is just infinitely entertaining. Watch this. Watch this.